Zen 5. Zen 5 and a mini PC. Zen 5 designed for laptops and a mini PC. Zen 5. Zen 5 and Zen 5C. As a matter of fact, four Zen 5 cores, eight Zen 5C cores, and a tiny little package from B-Link. Let's take a look. This is the Space Gray version. All right, so spoiler, kind of already been into this, but the reason that I wanted this piece of hardware is really just the Zen 5 cores because Zen 5 is a different beast. If you haven't been following this channel for a long time, you know many PCs, you know stuff with Linux. Oh, and spoiler alert, the Linux on this is really interesting. Like this versus Lunar Lake. Lunar Lake Linux is a mess right now. I get the Linux channel and should watch out for that video. We'll talk about that in another video. But this is the sea change moment that is happening right now because this packs in two different kinds of cores. The Zen 5C cores, they top out at 3.3 gigahertz in the Ryzen AI HX370. Four Zen 5 cores, eight Zen 5C cores. Now this does turbo up to 5.1 gigahertz on those Zen 5 cores, but Zen 5C cores have a little less cash. There's more of them. They don't clock quite as high, but they're extremely power efficient. And so this mini PC with its normal barrel style power brick, 1.6 amps, 19 volts, 5.2 amps, about 100 watts, give or take. So what am I on about with Zen 5 and Zen 5C cores? And what am I talking about C change? Well, if you've been following this channel for a long time, you've been following our other videos, you know that I'm into mini PCs and use cases and, you know, as Linux, before I got off track talking about Linux, all this kind of stuff. Eight Zen 4 cores and a tiny little package like this makes for an excellent, excellent home server. Linux compatibility, nothing special is needed. Generally, the strategy that AMD is adopting here with Zen 5 plus Zen 5C, the cores are different, but they execute code the same. From a software perspective, the cores are the same. It's really just the turbo and cache geometry that's different, which software doesn't explicitly have to worry about. The kernel can worry about it. Operating systems like Linux can handle that, no problem. Windows, to a certain extent, can deal with it pretty good, but the cores themselves are basically the same. But this means that for those home server workloads, even though this is eight plus four, this is more cores, it's gonna perform a little differently for those home server workloads. Now for a home mini PC that you just need to do shared email on, you know, like a family room PC or something behind the TV or something to give grandma or just something to get on the internet with, these are fantastic. And the Zen 5 plus Zen 5C, completely fine for that use case, no problems at all. Tearing this down, it has an integrated dust filter where it says, please dust regularly, presumably, can't just clean off the dust that would accumulate on the bottom. That also means that this thing needs to be a little breathable. Probably not good to set it on a fuzzy mouse pad or something like that because you don't have a ton of clearance on the bottom here and it does expect to be able to breathe from the bottom. Taking out the four screws from the corner, I am faced with two more screws. I also like that I'm starting to see engineered on the B-Link PCs built-in audio, like built-in reasonable quality audio. speaker module has a very delicate ribbon cable that it connects to and then you've got this heat sink and this heat sink is connected to your dual 2280 NVMe. Now this comes with one. My configuration was 512 gigabytes. B-Link offers some different configurations. This is also 32 gigabytes of memory. The memory does not appear to be user serviceable. The manual doesn't talk about it and I would have to take out far too many screws for it to be reasonable. So whatever memory configuration you order with these just plan on that being the memory configuration that you have until time immemorial. Maybe you could tear it down further and get to the memory, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. For the rear I.O., we have three type A USB ports that are five gigabit or better, display port and HDMI, one USB-C and the DC jack. We also have a combination of headphone microphone jack and a built-in two and a half gigabit wired ethernet port. On the front, we have one type A and one type C port, as well as another combination of headphone microphone port. Looks like we got a stereo microphone on the front and a mechanical button for power. Let's get this thing powered up and see where we go from there. Now the performance breakdown here is really interesting. I actually did end up re-imaging this a couple of times. Uh, Windows 24 H2 yeah, benefits Zen 5 a lot, we knew that. But also mobile Zen 5, yeah, it turns out the iGPU performance uplift is pretty significant as well as other benchmark performance. So just to make sure, reinstalled, cleared, done it. 
I was surprised to find that out of the box, this was also 24H2, which I didn't think was released yet. But when I did a clear, like, reinstall 23H2, then I reinstalled my own 24H2, but then it updated, but then it doesn't say that it's Insider or anything like that. So, anyway, 24H2 performance on this, quite solid. 2855 single thread, 15456 from this particular run on Geekbench. It does fluctuate a fair bit. Keep in mind that this CPU is a CTDP from AMD up to 28 watts. And B-Link's cooling solution here is quite good among other mini PCs. There's only one or two other mini PCs that have this sort of top tier, higher end cooling capability because, well, cooling is one of the first corners to be cut when you're building a low cost machine. And memory latency is just over 100 nanoseconds. I would like to see a little bit better memory latency and it's also oddly slow for DDR5 3800. We'll get into the BIOS in just a minute and see if I'm able to do a little bit better. Keep in mind when you first turn these machines on, they do take a little bit of time to DDR5 train. Sometimes they could get a bad training, maybe it makes sense to reset it. They've been off for a long time. You can also want to do a DDR5 retrain. Because the memory is not really exactly user upgradable, the training should go a little quickly on these mobile parts because you know the universe of possible DDR5 options is a little bit lower. But uh, yeah, what are you gonna do? I also like that you can run up to three displays with this, but this is gonna eat into your USB-C I.O. just a little bit. Really only recommend these for two displays, one HDMI and one display port. But overall, the performance is about where I would expect it to be for something like this. And 12 cores, 24 threads. Yes, those N5C cores, they do have simultaneous multi-threading, so you get 24 threads on this platform. So it is a performer, it performs well. I wouldn't get one of these with less than 32 gigabytes of memory, however. If you did pick up one of these and you want to add a second M.2 because you get the second slot, that's pretty easy. So you can get an inexpensive two or four terabyte M.2, use that for your games drive. Although I don't, I mean, unless you're just doing really casual gaming, not really even for casual gaming. This is an information processing appliance. Uh, it's not a terrible programmer device because you can run two high resolution monitors or maybe an ultra wide monitor, something like that, but eh. It does also have an NPU that is fully enabled that shows in Task Manager, so anything that should work for AMD's mobile NPU will work here. Keep in mind though that NPU, the Neural Processing Unit, the AI Accelerator, is really meant for AI in power constrained scenarios. Your GPU is going to get your AI workload done, but at a much, much higher power envelope. The NPU is designed to be able to run background AI tasks without taxing either the CPU or the GPU or the battery. But yeah, good job, good job B-Link, good job on the engineering. Let's take a look at the BIOS and see what options we've got for going off script. Well, so there we go, a lot of BIOS options. It's basically completely unlocked and yeah, PBO does actually seem to do something. It's really interesting. The system is actually not unstable just enabling PBO. You get a little bit better multi-core performance, single thread, about the same, slightly worse. AMD really knows what they're doing, they really tuned things to run really well and B-Link has put together a pretty good package. This is pretty satisfactory. And this is also the only system I have that is Zen 5 plus Zen 5C. Oh, that's not a server, of course. Oh boy, the servers. The servers. And this is one of the first products that mixes big and efficient cores. But it's a completely different strategy that Intel is doing with their performance and efficiency cores. And I can't underscore that enough because it's the same core. It's just that they took out some of the cache and some of the stuff that helps it get to beyond 3.3 gigahertz because the eight cores, the eight Zen 5C cores, the, the compact core, <laughs> it's just, I, I don't even know what, it's just Zen 5 and Zen 5C. And Zen 5C runs really well at the two to 3.3 gigahertz power envelope. And the monster Zen 5 cores with more cache will clock higher to 5.1 gigahertz. And yeah, we're seeing that in our Geekbench results and everything else. So. AMD's got a pretty solid platform, and B-Link's mobile CPU in a mini PC configuration is also pretty solid. Great conference room machine, great data entry. You know, I don't really know what, you're watching this, you'll have mini PCs because mini PCs are fun. I wish the memory were upgradable. You buy it for 32 gigabytes, but these things are also basically disposable. You get two, three, four years out of it, you're doing pretty well. I'm one of this level one, this has been a quick look at, at B-Link's Ryzen AI, HX370 based system with 
12 cores and 24 threads and 32 gigs of memory. And what are those level one? I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. Let's chat about this if you want to see stuff. Oh, I also want to do a video on this on the level one Linux channel. So hit me up in the forum if you want to see specific things for that Linux workload. I've already sort of done a little bit of the Linux testing. And let me tell you, between this and Lunar Lake, it's no contest. This is dramatically way better than Lunar Lake on Linux. The Linux enablement on Lunar Lake on the Intel platform is just not there in terms of performance. I mean, Lunar Lake's actually pretty good on Windows, but Linux, you can forget it. But this, this works really well with Linux out of the box. Basically any modern distro that you want to use with a, you know, a 6.x kernel, you're, you're basically good to go. Ubuntu, a, you know, Fedora, recent versions of Fedora, Arch Linux, of course. You could turn this into a Steam machine and stream because you do have the hardware acceleration for that instead of running the game locally. I'll chat about it in the forum. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.